Ever seen that fat burning zone on a cardio machine in the gym or heard the advice that if you want to lose a few pounds, you need to do long, slow, steady state aerobic exercise in the fat burning zone? Well, if you've ever wondered if this advice is actually true, keep watching because Rick and I have the answer for you. Yep, we'll be going through what the fat burning zone is, how it might be relevant to your training and stay tuned right to the end as we'll be giving you some key training sessions and a weekly routine to try it out. We'll get stuck in in a minute, but first off, please do do us a huge favor and hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we upload new videos to help you with your running, which we do every single week. So let's start by taking a look at how our bodies work. Our bodies convert fat and carbohydrates into energy. The energy production is constant, but the source varies depending on the situation and the environment. Our bodies tend to use the energy source that's most readily available to it. So if you've eaten a high carbohydrate meal, then you go and do a workout, your body will tend to use the carbohydrates for energy, no matter the intensity of that workout. Our bodies just try to be as efficient as possible. And we'll come on to where low carb, high fat diets come into things a little bit later on too. Through a few different biomechanical processes, our cells convert nutrients into chemical energy called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Our cells need more oxygen to turn fat into ATP. And this is why when we're at rest and oxygen is readily available, fat is often being used to create ATP. However, when we're exercising at a high intensity, there's less oxygen readily available. So therefore, it's more likely that carbohydrates will be converted. Body fat is great for providing slow release energy. So when you're at rest or completing moderate activities, when you switch it up and do a more intense activity or workout, your body will then turn to carbohydrates as its energy source. You will still be burning both carbs and fat, but at some point when exercise intensity increases, you'll start to burn more carbs than fat. This point's gonna differ between individuals and it can actually vary from day to day depending on your workout. It is that point though at which you are having to breathe harder and so there is less available oxygen to convert fat. That is when your body will turn to carbohydrates to convert into energy. So this brings us on to the fat burning zone. What is the fat burning zone? Well, it's a concept that the body burns more fat when doing low intensity aerobic exercise than it does at higher intensities. Actually, it's the percentage that is greater, not total fat burned. The body does burn a greater percentage of fat at lower intensities than at higher intensities. That's because at lower intensities, the body may burn more than 50% of calories from fat, while at higher intensities, it may burn 35%. But, and it's a big one, at higher intensities, you burn way more total calories and more fat calories overall than you do at lower intensities. So if we look at the total calories burned, then high intensity activity is the clear winner. You might be in the fat burning zone while you're walking, meaning your body is using energy from fat rather than from carbohydrates. But with total calories burned, you will always burn more by running at a higher intensity than you will by walking at a lower intensity for the same amount of time. If you complete all your workouts in a fat burning zone at a lower intensity, you might be burning fat, but you will be burning fewer overall calories from fat than if you completed at a high intensity workout. There's also what's known as the afterburn effect. So while this is only a small factor, it's worth considering. So the afterburn effect is when after intense activity for the couple of days afterwards, your metabolism tends to increase. As we said, this isn't a massive deal and you might not even notice the effects, but it is another reason as to why high intensity exercise will likely lead 
to a higher calorie burn. So we're not saying to throw the fat burning zone out of the window and do all of your workouts at a high intensity. What we are saying is that if your exercise goal is specifically to burn fat, then variety is going to be your friend. So make sure that your week has a mixture of workouts at low, moderate and high intensity. Having a good balance will enable you to burn calories as well as look after yourself and avoid injury. Make sure you do allow yourself adequate time to rest after a high intensity workout as your body will need time to recover. So as I mentioned earlier on in this video, we can't talk about getting your energy from fat and carbohydrates for running without addressing low carb, high fat diets. Now this is a very contentious topic and we don't claim to be experts. Firstly, the premise of a low carb, high fat diet is that by limiting your carb intake, you can become fat adapted, massively boosting your body's efficiency at using fat as an energy store and increasing your maximum rate of fat burning. This might mean you could fuel longer endurance events, mainly from the fat, potentially avoiding hitting the dreaded wall. And it has been shown that diets like this do indeed increase your body's ability to burn fat. But it's really important to say that people choose to stick to a low carb, high fat diet for a number of different reasons. If your reason is purely performance based and you're targeting an endurance event like a marathon or shorter, then the evidence might not be there to back that up. A recent study looking at elite race walkers in Australia showed that whilst athletes doubled their fat burning capability, they became less efficient. They needed 7% more oxygen at their 20 kilometer pace, which is roughly 80 to 90 minutes. They needed 6% more oxygen at their 50 kilometer pace, which is somewhere inside four hours. This was the second study by the same group showing the same results as well but it has been criticized for various perceived shortcomings. So this doesn't necessarily rule out low carb, high fat diets for ultra events or similar where you're running at a low intensity. And if you're not solely basing your choice on performance, then there are benefits to low carb, high fat diets because maybe you don't want to be reliant on carb rich, sugary energy gels, for example, whilst running a marathon. Anyway, this is a whole video in itself. We had to mention it within this one, but now on to key workouts. So the key to training is variety. And ultimately, if you wanna get better at running, then you need to throw some variety into the mix. So here are some key workouts for both low and high intensity. Low intensity workouts include a 5K or a 10K at an easy pace, and you should still be able to hold a decent conversation. Other low intensity workouts could include cross training, whether it's cycling, swimming, or yoga, anything that's gentle and not too high intensity. So a cycle around a local park, as opposed to a bike sprint up a mountain. Check out our video all about cross training for runners for more detail on that. High intensity workouts could include hill reps. So for a really easy session, go and find a local hill, run up it as hard as you can, and then jog back down for recovery and repeat as many times as you feel that you can. Another good session is an interval workout. So start with 10 minutes easy jog to warm up and then do three to six one mile hard efforts with 90 second jog recovery in between each one. And then you've got a 10 minute cool down after afterwards. And fart legs are another way to build high intensity into your running as well. You can be as rigid or as fluid with this as you want. You can pick landmarks and run between them like benches, bins, lampposts. Run hard between one to the other and then use the next section of your run to recover and so on. Or you can do it to time. So for example, you might want to start off with two minutes hard with two minutes recovery and then go again two minutes hard but cut that recovery down to 1.30 and then go two minutes hard and cut your recovery down to a minute. Loads of options out there when it comes to fart legs. So here's how you could build these workouts into your week. So Monday, rest day, Tuesday, an interval session, Wednesday, an easy 5K, Thursday could be hill reps, Friday, a rest day or an easy 5K, Saturday could be a little bit of cross training and a Sunday, well, an easy 10K. So hopefully that's answered some of your questions about the fat burning zone, what it is and how you can incorporate it into your running training. Got any questions for us? Leave them in the comments below. And while you're here, don't forget to check out some of our other videos on the running channel. 
See you next time.